Hello, my name is Nadine and welcome to Hop Along Studio. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a stamped background technique using archival inks and pan pastels. This technique for me is more than just another background technique. This is a way that I move past some of my creative blocks when I'm staring at that piece of paper going, what do I create? I know for many of us, we can sometimes be overwhelmed by what to use in our project, trying to find something to inspire us to create, or maybe you're new to art journaling or to creative practice. And this is a great way of just delving in and seeing what you get. It's meant to be very loose um, and not very perfectionistic. So I'm hoping that you will find this technique useful for you and you might be able to incorporate it into your creative practice. So let's get started. So let's start by talking about what we need for this project today. I'm using 140 pound cardstock. This particular cardstock is from Creative Scrapbooker magazine, but you can also use Bristol paper. I've used 140 pound Bristol paper before for this, or any sort of a heavier smooth cardstock will work really well for this. Also, I'm using a stamping block to go along with my stamps. I'm choosing these three Stampers Anonymous stamp sets today. I've had them for a while. I enjoy using them. They work really well together. So I have the Baroque, the Fabulous Flourishes, and the Flutter. And to apply this, I'm going to be using Ranger Jet Black Archival Ink. And to add some color to this, I will be using my pan pastels and my soft tools. So the first thing we're going to do is add our stamp to our stamping block and start adding some Ranger Archival Ink to our surface of the stamp. And the idea with this is to just start adding random stamping to your surface. For some reason, my stamping surface today, I'm having a little bit of trouble of getting perfect images. What's nice about this is you can you don't always have to have perfect images for a really effective background. When you have a, maybe a surface that isn't working as well for your stamping, you just need to press a little bit harder and press along all those little crevices just to make sure that you get a good stamped image. And maybe I'll throw another image on here as well. The idea is that you want to just cover your page with some images just randomly. And that's where I really enjoy just trying to do random things when I'm trying in a bit of a creative rut. It kind of gives me the opportunity just to do some creative play and see what I come up with. So when you have spots like this, don't worry about it too much. I'm gonna be filling it in with other stamped images as we go. And maybe part of the reason I'm having a little bit of trouble with these stamped images, I do use a lot of paint on a lot of my stamps and I think sometimes it ends up causing problems if I don't get them perfectly clean when I'm doing stamping like this. And I'm adding some of the Baroque stamps. And if you are interested in seeing my stamping video where I kind of go over some of my stamping techniques and how you stamp in my work, please see the card above. I actually kind of outline how I like to use the stamping process in my projects. And you don't always have to do just a perfect image. You can also do that second image. And you can see kind of where I cut off here where there's a little bit more ink and a little less ink. But that's not a, that's not a problem. And sometimes adding these letter layers adds a little bit more variety to your background. And you want to make sure you're always going off the page in areas with these ones. The idea isn't to always have a perfect, perfect image. The idea is to try to mix up the images as much as possible for a really interesting look. And sometimes that second stamping just again gives a little bit softer, different values to your background. Sometimes it's hard to kind of come up with the different values and to kind of give yourself the space to try something that isn't always that perfect black, but it does add a lot of interesting variety when you do so. And you want to add this in kind of groups and kind of let it go kind of as you'd like to see it and then see kind of where you want to start adding a few other images. And this is where you can kind of play it by ear. Add a few images, see how it looks like. And you might see a spot that you don't like, like I've been lost up on the edges, so let's try to work on the center a little bit. Let's try to get a little bit more variation. 
And you do want to try to leave white spaces where you can, or just even lighter values. So once you've kind of added your flourishes, the next thing we do is move on to adding some other maybe focal images that you want to color. In this case, I am using the Flutter collection from Cypress Anonymous. I'm using just one butterfly for this. Sometimes I like mixing it up and using a lot of different images, but in this case, we're trying to keep it simple. And now all these spots where maybe you had a, a weird spot, a place in stamp as well, or even a white space that you kind of want to fill a bit more, that's where the butterflies really come in. And you can put them on over areas that have more texture. You can go over areas with less. It really is up to you on what you want this final look to be for this background. You might think that these are not coming through very well, but once we add a little bit of a pan pastel, a little bit of color, it's pretty impressive just how much they pop from the background. Sometimes it's nice leaving these nice white spaces in here. You don't have to cover up absolutely everything. And the idea is you're just making a random background. This doesn't necessarily have to be really well thought out. The idea is just to throw some, some black and white on because you'll end up with a really interesting final result when you do that, just more randomly. This is also where you can check for any harsh lines or, or something that you're not really happy with. And again, it's meant to be random, so again, you don't always have to have perfect stamping, and every stamp doesn't have to be perfect to get kind of the look you're looking for. So now we're going to move on to adding some color. So now that we've actually stamped this background, which is really fun, it has some really great texture, and has a lot of different shades using a few different values on the background, but I really want to add a little bit more to this. So I'm going to be adding some pan pastels. It's an easy way of just adding a little bit of color and, and really quickly. So I'm going to actually be using a soft tool. I'm using a couple different shapes today just to try to get this color down. And these are clean. I've washed them even though they do have some other remaining color on them. So you just want to dip into your pan pastel just a little bit and just start adding your color. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to stay perfectly between the lines. It doesn't have to cover everything perfectly either. The idea is just to get that hint of color. And if you're interested in seeing some of my other videos on pan pastels, I actually do have a couple that I've already done and you can see the link to those videos up above. Pan pastels have definitely been one of my new favorite mediums to use. It's really easy to put down. You can get color down quickly. It's quite vibrant because of the high pigment. It has a different look too of pencil crayons or inks. And so just Continue just to dab in your color until you get all the yellow centers finished. And then we will move on to adding a little bit of blue to kind of blend this in. So an exercise like this is a great way of getting your creative juices flowing. Maybe it's because I do create art videos each week that sometimes I don't know where to start and I feel kind of bleh about things. I think we all go through moments of not feeling super creative. And so when that happens, that's usually when I start doing things like I will find a reference photo and start just doing some sketching. I'll go out in my garden and just start sketching some of the flowers. Or I pull out my pan pastels and my ink pads and I do something else. I pull out uh, like my, my napkins and I do some decoupage. I think it's just trying to come up with something to kind of get you started, to start with a background, start with something that might make you go, oh, well, I know I'm going to take this next. Because it can be really hard when you fall into that creative dry spell. And I think that's part of the reason I do a lot of art journaling. I love doing canvas painting. I love doing a variety of, of mediums, but sometimes you get stuck. And sometimes all you need to do is pull out a piece of paper or just grab a page in your art journal and start just putting stuff down and see what happens. If anything, you just learn how to use your materials better that you use in your in your practice, or maybe you come up with something really unique. So it's a great way of just trying to get past the overthinking, to get past it has to be perfect or it has to be something. It doesn't. You never know where it will lead once you kind of move past getting out of your own way and, and seeing what happens. And now that I've gotten down my yellow, I'm going to start adding some of the turquoise. That's where it gets really fun because the turquoise and the yellow will mix. So you end up with these nice little green spots. And by just adding a little bit of color and mixing it, you end up with a nice green in the center there. This is what I love about color mixing is you don't necessarily have to use a ton of colors. You can use two colors 
and you can make more than two colors. And I could get really specific about this and I could make sure everything's in between the lines, but I kind of don't care. I feel like a lot of the process of this is to be a little bit looser. Let the color kind of fall where it will. Try to stay close, but again, if you have little bits of the wings that don't get colored or you have a little bit past it in places. And so this is kind of the way I like to do some of these artistic exercises of learning to blend, learning to kind of work with the colors that you have, see kind of what you come up with and not being too particular about the final result. And with the pan pastels, if you really, really hate like, oh, I have a spot here, you can take an eraser and if you take your white eraser and just kind of work around those areas with your eraser, it'll come straight off. And so if you're very particular and you want everything between the lines, you just do that with your eraser. It removes some of those spots. Everything looks a little bit cleaner and then off you go. And so it's very easy to clean up and fix this. Just one thing I've learned is being a little less perfectionistic in my artwork. But if again, if this is going to be enough for you to go, I don't really want to try this, the eraser is a great thing. And this is where, in a way, that pan pastels are a little bit more forgiving than ink. Because again, if you make an error, you can always just erase the spot that you don't want. There are also more fine, soft tools for this that I have used in other videos. But in this case, I just wanted to do something really loose and really quick, which is why I'm using the larger sponges. The smaller sponges will actually give you a lot more control, but that was not my intention for this project. So what if you've added a bunch of your blue and you've decided you want a little bit more yellow or a little bit more of a pure yellow because we did do a bit of blending in there. A lot of these are now blue, green, and yellow. So if you want a little bit more of just the straight yellow, you can always go in and just add a little bit more on top. Strengthen those colors, add those layers to give it a little bit more brightness or maybe add a little bit more to that green so that you have a little bit more of that green tint in there instead of just being straight yellow and blue in areas. And like a spot here where I actually forgot to do the yellow all together. Now I can add in a little bit of the yellow and it just brightens things up a bit more or blends things a bit more. You can go back and forth. This doesn't have to be only one step. That's the beauty of the pan pastels. You can add little layers. You can make certain ones a little bit brighter, a little ones a little bit darker. You can add a bit more values to what you're doing. The possibilities are really up to whatever you come up with, what you, what you like to see in your artwork and what kind of final look you're looking for. So before you do anything else, once you're really happy with this, is you need to seal it in. Pan pastels always need to be sealed in. I have a workable fixative, which is great if you have done some layers, but you maybe want to go back and do some more layers, but don't want the color underneath to move at all. A workable fixative is great because what it will do is it will seal in what you've done and allow you to add more layers on top. But when you are finally done your piece of work, you want to add a varnish of some sort on top. In this case, I'm using a matte varnish. I've tried this actually with a gloss varnish. It actually ruins the look of the pan pastels. You need to be really careful about what your what series and type of varnish you're using when you're trying to seal this in. A matte varnish works well because the pastels are fairly matte and it will seal them in without kind of ruining the color. Instead, it's going to be very true to what you've done here. So something to be aware of, I ended up for the sake of my project, I ended up sealing it two or three times with the varnish just to make sure that a full pan pastel was fully sealed in. I wouldn't have to worry about it lifting at all. So now that you've done this beautiful background, what do you do next? Honestly, you decide what type of project you want to turn it into. In this case, I had originally done this background for a cover for this little book that I made. I was doing a hand stitch book. I wanted to do a soft cover for it. And 140 pound cardstock works really well for this type of cover. It actually overlaps each other. So I wanted a pattern that would look really good over top of each other. So by choosing something random, it worked really, really well. And that's why you want to seal it in well, because once you seal it in well, it doesn't matter how much you touch it, it still works really well as a book. And then I had some extra sections left over, so then I also made myself a card. So for this card, I basically just took a section of what was left. I used the Stampers Anonymous Bold Saying Stamp Set. This is one of the newer ones. I really love the focus on the good stamp. I used some acrylic paint, stamped it, framed it, 
and now it's a beautiful card. So you don't need a lot of materials to come up with these great backgrounds. I could have also done this with the art journal and then added other things on top. There's a variety of ways you can use these beautiful images very quickly to create beautiful projects. So I hope you've learned something new today and maybe learned a new technique that you can add to your creative practice. I know we all go through these creative dry spells or these creative blocks and I hope that you found this video useful and maybe a bit encouraging to realize that you're not alone in this. We all go through these times but there are ways to try to move past it, to try to have those creative juices flowing so that we can come up with beautiful projects that we enjoy and that we find restoration through the process. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, if you can like it, subscribe to my channel, and provide a comment below about what you liked about this video. Also hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I just wanted to say thank you. I have just hit over 500 subscribers, so the fact that you take the time to watch these videos and to subscribe means so much to me. So I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you so much. Also, if you're looking for more creative inspiration or art ideas, you can visit my website, hopalongstudio.com. There I go into a little bit more detail than I do in the videos, as well as I share written and photo instructions for each of these projects. You can find the supply list either below or also on my website. So I hope you have a really great week and I will see you next time.